buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. We have got a lot to talk about here on the show today, because after 18 months, finally tonight, fans return to WWE programming. SmackDown tonight, sold out, packed with fans. Money in the Bank on Sunday, sold out and packed with fans. I expect stuff to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I expect stuff to happen. So we could talk about that here tonight. And if you watched the AEW show on Wednesday, yesterday, what a swing and a miss on my part. I think I predicted 720,000 viewers for that, uh, that Dynamite show. Boy, was I wrong. The show broke a million going head-to-head with Game 4 of the NBA Finals. If you look at the competition that AEW had last night, and if you see what I predicted, I mean, I think I was most surprised. I don't think there was one number this year that surprised me more than the AEW number last night. So we're going to break down what happened and the ratings for AEW on Wednesday and how much of that can be attributed to live touring show with fans. What will this mean For SmackDown tonight, is SmackDown going to jump back over 2 million viewers tonight? I certainly hope so. we got Money in the Bank coming up on Monday, or on Sunday as noted, Raw on Monday. And we have ticket sale updates for a number of upcoming shows, including, yes, the AW show at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. The pre-sale, they did a ton of tickets, and then tickets went on sale today. And it looks like this show is going to do easily 17,000 fans. And uh, maybe they'll even open up more. I don't know. But we'll talk about that. Some other WWE and AEW ticket sale notes. We have got lineup for Slammiversary. Lineup for Money in the Bank. And perhaps a return of Goldberg. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Just got an email that WrestleVotes reporting that Finn Balor returns tonight on the SmackDown show. And uh, I can try and confirm that. I don't know if it's true or not, but I wouldn't be surprised because stuff's going down tonight on the first show in front of live fans. Fighter Fest Night 1 edition of AEW Dynamite. Yesterday on the show... I think I predicted 720,000 viewers as they were going up against Game 4 of the NBA Finals. And if you guys have been paying attention, the NBA Finals have massacred everybody. They've massacred Raw and SmackDown and AEW and NXT. Uh, Everyone has been a victim of the NBA Finals. And then, for whatever reason, and I have no real explanation for this, but AEW... With the NBA Finals going head-to-head, 1.025 million viewers, up 17.7% from the previous week. Fifth largest audience in Dynamite history going head-to-head with Game 4 of the NBA Finals. 0.40 rating at 18-49. to I believe Monday Night Raw did a 0.43 rating. At 18 to 49. So Dynamite almost tied Raw at 18 to 49 viewers. Actual viewership number in that category 518,000, 18 to 49 viewers, up 22.7% from the previous week. The viewership and demo number highest for Dynamite since May 5, year over year. And granted, this is with. Uh, This is with NXT competition year over year. Up 30% in overall viewership. Up 37.9% at 18 to 49. And Dynamite had competition from NXT last year. But no NBA Finals last year. So that was something they had. uh, A huge increase, it says here. Very unusual for cable television to increase the way that they have. So if you... uh, I mean, the quarters, the story basically is uh, the first quarter with the uh, Moxley match did somewhere in the 800,000s, and then the second quarter fell, and then the third quarter, which was the end of the FTW title match, so those guys deserve credit because they boosted everything, that bumped up to above a million, and then it never dropped below a million for the rest of the show. 
The high point of the show in terms of viewership was the face-off with Hangman Page and Kenny Omega, who obviously are going to be fighting for the title at the next pay-per-view. So that tells you all you need to know about what people think of that feud. And then the highest in the 18-49 to 49 demo was actually the segment that had the Britt Baker promo setting up her match next week and the Sammy Guevara match with Wheeler Yuta. So my guess is that that was mostly Britt Baker because the number fell after the Sammy Guevara Wheeler Yuta match. But one way or the other, I mean, that was a high point in terms of 18 to 49. So I don't know. I guess we'll see what SmackDown does tonight. Maybe SmackDown's going to do like 2.3 million viewers tonight with the return of fans. I mean, it's possible there's something with people tuning into the show and, oh, my God, there's a packed crowd here going nuts. I'm going to watch this show. Uh, We did, I mean, at the beginning of this pandemic, people did tell me, and I did not think this was true, that they were not going to watch until fans came back. Ah, come on. You'll you'll come back at some point. But uh, fans came back with a vengeance on Wednesday for AEW and 1.0, whatever it was, million viewers, uh, 1.025. And SmackDown... Uh, 10,000 people in the building tonight for a live SmackDown on Fox. If that show doesn't do well above 2 million, man, I don't know what to tell you. Hopefully it does. So there you go. That's the numbers from Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's probably a good sign, you know, for SmackDown and for Raw, which will be following a pay-per-view anyway with Money in the Bank. In, In theory, one would think that should help matters. It has not, you know, it seen much of a big bump in the last God knows how many months, months and months and months on end where that hasn't happened, but it should happen. And I think there is a curiosity factor with the fans being back, you know, how these shows are going to look and getting that feeling back of watching the wrestling that, you know, they remember again, because yeah, there's been WrestleMania and yes, there's been people in Jacksonville, but you know, it, there's still nothing like having, you know, ten to 15,000 people or eight even to 15,000 people in any building for wrestling. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think there's some curiosity factor there. Now, where AEW succeeded mightily, as we talked about yesterday, they had a great show. So they had a great night and a picked a great time to have a great show. Can SmackDown do that? Can Raw do that coming out of 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 money in the bank they're trying obviously with some of the names that we've heard rumored now in the last couple of days will goldberg show up on raw will finn balor show up on smackdown tonight so they are getting some things out there and there seems to be some interest and some you know curiosity for those things at least online we'll see if that translates to tv so the other thing too to watch is over the next several weeks if you guys recall when wwe went from empty buildings to the thunderdome they got a huge boost Because, in fact, it was more fun to watch a show in a Thunderdome than an empty building. So now I expect them to get a boost in AEW as well, uh, going in front of live fans in packed buildings. But it'll be interesting to see how long does this last. Is this a permanent increase for AEW? Is this a permanent increase for WWE if they do 2.3, 2.4 million viewers for SmackDown tonight? Or is it going to do what happened with the Thunderdome, which is at the beginning, it goes way up, And then it goes back down again. That will be the thing to watch from here on out. The other big story today, yesterday, or a couple of days ago, AEW did their pre-sale for the Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York. And as of 2.54 p.m. Eastern, according to WrestleTix.com, they are well above 15,000 tickets sold. The capacity is now above 17000 They added new sections, uh, $25 tickets today. Of the available tickets, there are 2600 left, so those could be gone by the end of the day. And yes, in the same market, a week and a half apart, AEW has sold double the tickets of WWE in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is around 7000 right now. AW is around 14,000. Now, to be fair, there are a couple of things here that make it not quite a valid comparison. Number one, Madison Square Garden tickets are much more expensive than the AEW tickets. That's number one. Number two, which uh, you can argue whether this is valid or not. In some ways, it is valid, but as I'll note, in other ways, it's not. Madison Square Garden, you have to be vaccinated to get in. And if you are under the age of 12, you cannot get vaccinated. 
So, for example, if I wanted to take my family to Madison Square Garden, I got a five-year-old and I got a one-year-old. They can't go. So I can't just buy four tickets. If I want to buy four tickets to all of us for Arthur Ashe, I buy more my four tickets and I go. Now, the argument that, well, it's not quite fair because you have to be vaccinated to get in, that is true. However, if you guys go back when WWE celebrates the uh, sellout streaks in Madison Square Garden and how many times Bruno Sammartino sold out the garden and Pedro Morales and whoever it was, uh, kids couldn't go to Madison Square Garden back then. So Madison Square Garden is sold out for WWE, WWF, WWWF countless times with no children being allowed to go to the show. So in 2021, it's different. A lot of people do take their children to the show. So there is expensive ticket prices, and also nobody under 12 is basically allowed to get into the building. But uh, it's still the same market. It's a week and a half apart. And uh, one show is doing 7,000, and the other show is doing, doing uh, 17,000 here probably by the end of the day. And uh, the reality well, is neither has announced a card for the show. But it's the first time ever. That's the one thing AEW will have going for it in different places for a while, doing the first thing ever. And it's the first time ever to run a show in New York for them, right? No, it's the first time Actually, ever. Actually, they're, they're going to New York a week earlier. Well, they're going, to, going a week earlier. But, I mean, you know, first time generally in the market. Not only that, you're at Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium, the U.S. Open, where, I mean, you've never seen any other event besides tennis there, I think, most people. So... It's a it's a first, and it's a big deal, and people can say, hey, I went to the first one. Madison Square Garden, WWE, uh, it's been done. Not that anything's wrong with that, but that's another thing they have going for them. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Before we get going, what a special day today. The return of fans to WWE for SmackDown tonight. The return to fan or return of fans to Money in the Bank. The return of fans to Monday Night Raw Monday, AEW, and yes, the return of fans to WrestlingObserver.com. Our sale is going on right now. If you head to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez or you head to the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, our welcome back sale, three dollars and ninety nine cents for a unlimited month. Of WrestlingObserver.com. Unlimited. What does that mean? No restrictions on our members area. We do at least 20 new audio shows only for subscribers every week. Observer Live, Brian and Vinny Show, Figure Four Daily. We got Lance Storm coming up tonight. We got uh, Filthy Tom Lawler coming up Monday. Adam and Mike's show. All of our new shows with Denise and, and Matt Med and Garrett. Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave Meltzer at least three times a week, sometimes more. At least 20 brand new shows. This ain't like one of those goes, oh, we do a podcast once a week. Oh, no. Oh, no. Many days I do three members-only shows in one day. Sign up for three ninety nine. Not only do you get every single one of those new shows, but every show that we have ever done dating back to 2005 is in the archive. So if you pay $3.99 today, you have access to over 12,000 archived radio shows. No, that was not a typo on my Twitter. Not 1,200. 12,000 audio shows. If you sat down... And you decide, I'm going to listen to every single one of those shows. You couldn't. You'd be dead first. Think about all of that that you've got at your fingertips. 12,000 audio shows with 20 new shows being added every single week. $3.99. You get the new Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. You get back issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Figure Four Weekly. The archives of all of these newsletters as well. There's thousands of newsletters archived. Oh, you want to know what happened on uh, April 15, uh, 2002? Oh, I can go into the archives and read the entire Observer from that week. And the entire Figure Four. $3.99. So go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. Go up there to WrestlingObserver.com. Sign up today. Try it. If you don't like it, you know what you do? Well, you don't pay anymore. But if you like it, you will never have a commute. You will never have a boring day at the gym. You will never have a shower where you're just listening to the sound of the water in your ears. You'll be able to listen to this when you go to bed at night and when you wake up in the morning. Every day for the rest of your life, you'll never run out of audio on pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. WrestlingObserver.com, 
at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. The links are up there. Do not miss out on this one. The fans are back watching wrestling, and you can be back listening to pro wrestling as a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com. And you know what? As a subscriber to the main site, you don't have to listen to Ryan and Cumberland on the Twitch chat here try to tell you that a grown person couldn't figure out if my one-year-old was 12 or not. You know who's also on the Twitch chat right now? I don't want to know. Filthy, filthy Tom Lawler is is. on the Twitch chat right now. Yes, he is. So you never know when you could interact with a a member of the Figure Four community. You you never know. You you show up for an Observer Live, Filthy shows up, it's time for a celebration. Bro. You know what I like to do when I'm celebrating, Brian? This. Oh, don't even start that. You heard my rant. I just muted him. Hey, listen, if you're a subscriber, Filthy Tom Lawler throws out his email. You can email Filthy Tom Lawler and talk to him as a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com. What could be cooler than that? He loves to get emails asking about all sorts of things. So sign up and and get his email and uh, and enjoy the show. All right, back to the news. Couple of other uh, couple of other ticket notes here. So uh, as noted, WWE sold out tonight. WWE sold out on Sunday. WWE is probably going to sell out Raw. But you know what? WWE is not doing good selling tickets to. What's that? House shows. Holy smokes! So they started running. Uh, it started putting tickets on sale for these house shows, and uh, weren't doing very well. So then they announced that they're now super shows. You can you can see the same matches that you've seen eighty times from both brands if you buy a ticket. Well, uh, they got a September eighteenth show in North Charleston, South Carolina, where they have currently sold eight hundred and forty two tickets. Ooh, that's not too good, right there. Extreme Rules on September 26th, which is a pay-per-view. They've sold 3,900 tickets, which is uh, 64%. And uh, what else do we have? We got the Pittsburgh Dynamite, which is at uh, 3,600 tickets. Uh, The Dynamite, actually, that's Rampage. Is it 3,600 tickets for the debut of Rampage on Friday? That's August 13th. And the Pittsburgh show... Uh, headlined by Britt Baker, is uh, currently 70% full, 4,000 tickets sold. There's about 455 tickets left. And uh, WWE has a uh, super show, which is coming up next week, which currently is at 3,300 tickets. Uh, There are still 3,000 tickets available for that super show coming up in a week. We have got uh, two pay-per-views coming up. This weekend, Money in the Bank, obviously, Roman Reigns versus Edge. We have got Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte for the title. The Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Asuka, Naomi, Alexa, Nikki, Zelina, Liv Morgan, Natalia. One open slot. But they did not save it for SmackDown Live tonight. They just announced that Tamina is in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Which is only fair... Because Natty got put in, even though Natty did a job two weeks ago. So it was only fair that Tamina goes in. Because nobody's Mina. We got the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and Shinsuke Nakamura. We got AJ Styles and Omos versus the Viking Raiders for the tag team titles. And on the pre-show... I have no earthly idea why. It is Ray and Dominic against the Usos, a match that we've seen, I think, three times now, including two times on one show, and the Mysterious won every time. We're doing it again on Sunday on the pre-show, which, for all I know, the Usos might win. So, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that's that. And then Slammiversary is Saturday, and uh, I watched the entire Impact show. If you guys want me to do the Impact report every week, I'd be happy to. I'm going to watch Impact and Ring of Honor every week. So we can uh, better cover those shows. We have Kenny Omega and Sammy Callahan in a no DQ match for the Impact title. God bless Impact, but Sammy Callahan, who's a really, really good, he's a very good promo. But he opens up the show and he did a promo, which I can still not wrap my mind around. So maybe a regular Impact viewer can explain this to me. Sammy Callahan says, he goes, Every time you have a match, Kenny Omega, these good brothers try to interfere. Therefore, I want a no-DQ match. I was like, 
What? Huh? They they interfere every time, and so your solution is a match with no DQs where they can just interfere? Hopefully he's got a crew, because otherwise, I don't know what that was all about. We got Deanna Parazzo, who will be defending the Knockouts title against a mystery challenger. And uh, they were teasing that it could be anybody, including, of all people, No Way Jose. So we'll see who she ends what? up. What? <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say Britt Baker. What? No, <laughs> no they, Way Jose? They, well, they were doing a deal where... Um, <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Let me keep getting through the card. It was actually actually funny the way they did it. We got Fire and Flava versus Rosemary and Havoc for the Knockouts Tag Team titles. We have Violent by Design, The Good Brothers, Rich Swan and Willie Mack, and TJP and Fala Ba fighting for the Impact Tag Team titles. We have an Ultimate X match with Josh Alexander, Trey Miguel, Rohit Raju, Petey Williams, Ace Austin, and Chris Bay. Chris Saban will face Moose, which actually... I think that's going to be a great match because I saw the stuff they did on the show. Moose is very good, and he's very big. And Chris Saban is awesome, and he's very small. You can't mess up a match like this. We have W. Morrissey, the former big cast, facing Eddie Edwards. And the new match, Matt Cardona and a mystery partner against Brian Myers and Tennille Dashwood. Who will the mystery partner be? So... Anyway, the segment backstage, Scott Demore is there, and uh, he's with Deanna Parazzo. And uh, he wants her to sign this, uh, this contract, and uh, she has alerted him that she has been told, don't sign this contract under any circumstances uh, for this, uh, because she doesn't know who her, her opponent is going to be, and Demore is not going to tell her. And there are these uh, special stipulations in the contract. Anyway, the, the whole thing is Scott Demore goes, um, I forget all of them that it, that it was, but it was like, uh, it could be a hot mess. So they're teasing Chelsea Green. Or it could be a, um, I forget the term he used, but he was teasing Mickey James. And uh, so finally she gets all mad and she signs the contract without even reading it. So she's in trouble. And then uh, Demore goes to leave and she goes, so you're not going to tell me who it is? And he turns around and goes, no way, Jose. So I hope it is actually Deanna Parazzo versus No Way Jose. Because <laughs> the one thing about this Impact show is um, they do intergender on Impact Wrestling. Uh, they don't do it in WWE. Uh, AEW has the same rules. Men have to face the men. Women have to face the women. But uh, in Impact, it's like anything goes. And the reality is I don't like that kind of intergender. But they got to do something to separate themselves, and they've decided that's one of the things they're going to do. They're going to do intergender matches. I don't like it. If you like it, well, Impact is the promotion for you. And quite frankly, um, oh, we'll get to that later. We got a lot more to get into after the break, everybody. More news, your feedback. Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. A few things to uh, add. So first off, fans return for Slammiversary, by the way. I didn't mention that. People on the chat are like, I can't believe Brian watched Impact. Yeah, I watched Impact. And uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, maybe maybe it'll start to irritate me after a while. But there's a lot of real campiness on the Impact show. But like most of the campiness is reserved for the stuff in between the matches. Like they do a segment backstage. They do a segment at a hotel room, whatever. But it's not like, you know, there's a voodoo doll in the middle of the wrestling ring and a bunch of crap. I don't want to see that in the in the in the wrestling ring. If you want to do your goofy stuff backstage, whatever, knock yourself out. But like in the ring, I want to see wrestling. Wait, hold on, hold That's on. That's what hold I saw on. last night. But to be fair, in recent times, not one, but two people have died. On impact, a child was hit by a car. Not in the ring. It was in the back. A child was hit by a car in the ring, and then a man was shot on the ramp. Was he not? I don't know. I didn't see that show. During his wedding, a man was shot on the ramp. Well, hey, like I said, (laughs) if I see dumb stuff, I'll tell you about it. Hey. But I didn't see anything that dumb on the show last night. 
you're right about one thing. They need to fill a niche. You know, when yes. NWA when the NWA came back around the first time around before, you know, everything happened, you know, we saw Ricky Starks for the first time. We saw Zicky Dice for the first time. I mean, not for the first time, but on a national stage, we saw guys, you know, come back. Wade Barrett, uh, L.A. Knight, Eli Drake, you know, guys like that where they took something and they had a niche for themselves and they carved it. AEW obviously has carved out their niche. WWE's got theirs. How do you stand out and be different? ROH did a great job during the pandemic with their pure wrestling. I was not bullish on, on bringing that back. As far as the pandemic, if there's a silver lining in things, if you're looking for things, the pure tournament ending up taking place during the pandemic as opposed to you know, the rest of the year when there was all this other stuff going on, it actually enhanced those matches in that show. I can't say anything about Impact because I have not seen an Impact weekly TV show in a long time. And I've only seen the one pay-per-view where Omega won the title. That's the only pay-per-view I've seen from them in a long time. So I don't know what's going on there. But you read the reports and they have carved their niche by bringing in guys who... Look, that six man is going to be really, really good. You know, there's a good mix of people that are going to be in that match, including guys like Trey Miguel and Ace Austin and Chris Bay and Rohit Raju that are, I mean, they're good. And they're the next wave on the indie scene. Old names like, you know, Willie Mack uh, and Rich Swan, which just seems to be a perfect team, you know, together. They seem perfect for each other, you know. So to have those types of guys and to have a little bit more wackiness, whether anybody likes it or not, if that's the thing that sets them apart and that's the thing that drives interest or continues to latch anybody that happens to be watching for Kenny Omega only, you know, I, I think that's this is about the best that they can do. Peter Lee Inside reported Thursday, WWE corporate employees learned that raises and promotions have been reinstated. That's nice. Oh. It's mighty, yeah, something of them. All right. He also, Fightful Select reports as of today, Goldberg uh. is scheduled to return to Raw on Monday's episode at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Oh, come on. It reports that WWE's current plan is to have Goldberg versus Lashley at SummerSlam on Saturday, August 21 at the Allegiant Stadium in Nevada. States that Goldberg's contract runs through 2022, calls for two matches per year. You know, I just want to, I mean, maybe it's going to be awesome. I don't know. I mean, it's two big dudes. But is there anybody who would rather see their plan of Goldberg versus Lashley? Or would you rather see my plan, which is Kofi Kingston beats Bobby Lashley and becomes a WWE champion? And then you build to the return of Brock Lesnar, and you do a big match with Kofi and Brock, and Kofi actually gets his win back, which is a story they've told for the last three years. I like my idea better. But maybe this will be good. Kofi or him winning, fine, if that prevents Goldberg from coming back. I'm not as bullish on that idea because I think Kofi losing and then Xavier losing again, which because they, in theory, set that up with Xavier beating him and then Big E coming back in the draft or winning money, something like that to come back and and avenge his brothers in the New Day and, and topple uh, Bobby Lashley. I think that could be an idea. The idea of Brock Lesnar being involved, even though I wouldn't want to see Brock Lesnar go over Bobby Lashley, I like that idea a lot more than, no offense to Mr. Goldberg as a human being, as a person, as a humanitarian, any of those things. I don't want to see Goldberg back in the ring. I'm good. Well, let's see what else we've got here. A couple of notes on uh, on AEW. Ray Phoenix ready to return after dealing with a groin injury that's put him out of action since April. AW returning to the Indiana Farmers Coliseum November 10th, which is the follow-up for Full Gear. Tickets not on sale yet. And uh, the Jericho MGF Sean Spears segment from Dynamite was a pre-tape as Fozzie was holding a sold-out concert in Iowa City, Iowa, their first full show since the pandemic, although they did perform at the Sturgis Motorcycle rally of summer. What's so funny? No, nothing. What are you laughing about? I'm not laughing about anything. You're He's not allowed to do laugh. a concert, but you can You're do a sold out wrestling show. That's okay. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You're you're putting you're putting. Well, what are you laughing about? You want me to read it again? We'll see where you laughed. 
Yeah. <laughs> a Chris Jericho, MGF Sean Spears segment from Dynamite was pre-taped as Jericho's band Fozzie were holding a sold-out concert in Iowa City, Iowa. I, I, that's fine. I've been, What's so I, funny? The Did fact I tell that a joke? Wrote, the fact that you Is it funny there's a place called Iowa City in Iowa? You want Iowa City to be in South Dakota or uh, Florida? We love you Quad Cities. Uh. By the way, Hey, this is true, apparently. Whenever Mike tells me news, I don't trust him. Oh, but I confirmed stop. it here. Double WWE source. actually put out a video highlighting <laughs> the what chant. Yeah. Prior to tonight. Can you imagine? Why would you ask for that? Bro, let me tell you something. I'm watching these uh, these 2001 Invasion era Raws with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And, dude, he started doing the what like three weeks ago. And he's already irritated. He's already, he's already, he, Steve Austin is already trying to shut these fans down from doing the what chant because it's so irritating. And that is how you want to showcase the first show back with fans in 2021 by telling them to chant what at everybody? Whatever, bro. It's not my show. Show old nitros or fans are jumping in the ring. You know, jump on that craze. You know, just do everything. The the, the worst, nothing but beach balls being uh, batted about during women's matches. Yeah, why don't you, because, why don't you show a uh, recap of know. people throwing beach balls? That's what we need. Do a video of best of beach ball interruptions in WWE shows. That'll make things better tonight. Holy smokes. I've seen it all. Person here says, Britt Baker, in an interview with Daily Star, fully admitted she had no idea what she was doing when she was thrust into the spotlight of the rapidly rising AEW. She said she has all the love in the world for her counterparts in NXT, for instance, but clearly wanted due credit for the product, uh, the progress AEW's women's roster have made. I love the NXT women's division. I'm friends with so many of the girls, but they have a performance center. My performance center was AEW Dynamite. I was learning as we go. You train in the ring, you cut promos, you practice as much as you can. But I don't have a wrestling ring in my backyard, a television setup, or a hard cam to pan to. So a lot of what you see on TV is just trial and error because, again, we don't have the performance center. I think that's why fans have taken a liking to me because they've been along for the ride since day one when I clearly didn't know what I was doing. Look at her now. Hey. Incredible how you can learn on the job and how you learn faster on the job. That's the key. You learn faster on the job. Tis true. Sink or swim. And, you know, she's an achiever. And it's not unfair to say Britt Baker is not great in the ring. At times, she hasn't even been good in the ring, especially when you put her up there against Are we talking Serena the old Deeb. Britt Baker or Hold this on. Britt Baker? Well, against Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa, when you, when you compare people at levels, no, she's not anywhere close to that yet. Yet. But she's got everything that you want except for the ring time. She's got the presence. She knows who she is. The, all of that. The, her character is an extension of her. So it's just very easy for her as a dentist. As you know, Everything fits perfectly where all this woman needs is more ring time. And they are not against bringing in good people to work with. And the more and more things open up, the more... Things in the next couple of years, and I'm not just talking about now, I'm talking about in the next couple of years, especially as the world really opens up back again and AEW makes different connections and she can travel to different places. You know, her sky is, you know, the, the limit in the sky is very high for her. Very, very high. This person here says, I, for one, am not in favor of beach balls. If you paid your money just to come and act bored, you're providing nothing because they already got your money. They win, not you. Protest by not paying for a ticket. I disagree partially to this, okay? Dude, I don't like when you're throwing the beach ball around. And, and, and part of that is because when you throw the beach ball around, you're, you're taking not only attention away from the wrestlers in the ring— but the fans that actually do like it and want to pay attention, they're also distracted because you're throwing the beach ball and security's coming and everybody's booing and you're distracted. I don't like that. However, here's where I do disagree. Beach balls, and I've been to many shows with beach balls. People do not throw around the beach ball for the entire show, okay? The last show that I remember being at with the beach ball was Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. 
And the fans had absolutely zilch interest in that main event. And it was WrestleMania, if I recall correctly. And they're throwing the beach balls and they're doing whatever, okay? They didn't do that for any of the other matches. They specifically chose that match to revolt against, okay? And they revolted because in no way did they feel that they were given what they wanted with this Brock Lesnar-Roman Reigns storyline and the match and the whole nine yards. They didn't want it, okay? I would prefer... If you just booed, or maybe if you're really mad, you can turn your back or whatever, or just leave, like if you really don't like it. I don't like the beach balls and everything like that. But the fans that didn't like that match, you're telling me that because they don't like a main event match that they shouldn't even go to WrestleMania at all? Dude, listen, if WrestleMania is coming to my town, I'm going. I'm buying a ticket, and I'm going to enjoy it. If they trot out Alexa Bliss in a doll... Bro, I don't want to see it. I'll walk out, okay? But that doesn't mean that I don't want to see the whole show. You understand what I'm saying? It's not right to say, oh, you don't like Alexa's doll, so don't buy a ticket at all. What if you want to see the rest of the show? What if you want to see Drew McIntyre? What if you want to see whatever? Like, you should be allowed to go to the show, but if you pay your money, you should also be allowed to revolt. Now, I don't like revolt with throwing stuff in the ring and stuff like that, but you should be able to boo or go to concessions or whatever. That's fine. doesn't mean you have to skip the whole show. Can I say something very quickly to some of the sensitive folk and or virgins that are in the chat right now? Excuse me? You heard what I said. And those people should probably hear what Britt Baker said about herself and the fact that her experience level is is low. I'm not saying Britt Baker, Britt Baker is a horrible wrestler. What I'm saying is, is if she is great as people want, she's great, she's great. Then what does that make like Io Shirai, Mako Satomura, Mickey James, people like that? It's okay to say she's got a long way to go. She knows she has a long way to go. What I'm saying is the long way to go and the road she's traveling is very bright, and it's going to be accelerated very quickly. But it's okay. Just because she's pretty or you really like her character, it's okay to say she's got a long way to go in the ring. I'm a a confirmed non-version. I have two kids. I think Britt Baker right now is really good. Yeah, when she started, she didn't know what she was doing. When she started, she wasn't very good. But when she came back from that broken leg, and I don't even know how, she was twice as good in the ring as she was before she broke her leg. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Friends, if you would like to be called a virgin for just $3.99 a month, have I got a special for you. Head to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. Or the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. And you can get a full month of access to our website for just $3.99. That includes this show. You can pay to be insulted like that. $3.99 a month. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, myself and Dave Meltzer, Figure 4 Daily. Uh, Filthy Tom Lawler of Figure 4 Daily is in the Twitch chat right now as we speak. Lance Storm did a, a Q&A with the Twitch homies last week, answered all of your questions. You got not- 20 new shows a week. You get 12,000-plus shows in the archives, $3.99. How could you not take advantage of this deal, besides the obvious? So head up there right now. It's today only. At midnight tonight, it's done. $3.99. Unlimited, full membership access to WrestlingObserver.com. You will not regret it. You can come back. If, you, if you're a lapsed Observer fan, you can come back. Just like them fans are coming back tonight for the SmackDown show. Sunday for Money in the Bank. Monday for Raw. Not Tuesday for NXT. But Wednesday for AEW. Saturday for Slammiversary. They're coming back to New Japan Strong. Ring of Honor all over the world. They're coming back. And you can come back as well. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. WrestlingObserver.com. I think I want to thank Mike. I'm not sure. But thanks to all the Twitch homies for being in an uproar. We appreciate you. Everybody at Sports Byline USA, the Mightier 1090. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.